God is on a throne. Prayer changes things. Father, we pray to you. For you sit on a throne, O God of glory, a throne of holiness, a throne of judgment, a throne of mercy, and a throne of grace. Lord, we pray, O God, that you will look on your servants this morning, O God, and have mercy upon us as we try to understand what is written in the Holy Scriptures. Let your servant, O God, be able to, O God, to speak in a way, O God, that those that listen and those that hear may understand the city of the living God. In Jesus' name we ask and pray, and for his name's sake, amen. Psalms 48, starting with verse 1. A Psalm, a Psalm of the Sons of Korah. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in his holy mountain. Right there, the song... A revelation from the sons of Korah. Uh, men who were gifted to enter the presence of God through worship and praise. And here they pen something from one of the experiences they had as they were worshiping God and praising God. One day they were worshiping the Lord, and all of a sudden, God took them somewhere. And what, God, and what God did was he revealed to them that which was in their spirit when they were worshiping God, when they were praising God. It's known as high worship. Uh, not many people ever attain to that place where they get caught up in their worship and, and when, they, when, when they get filled with the spirit. But Korah, or the sons of Korah one day were so filled that they pleased God and God lifted them up so they could say, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And they saw something as they were lifted up in the city of our God, his holy mountain, not a mountain of dirt, not a city of bricks, but an holy city resting on a holy mountain. Verse 2. Beautiful in elevation, the joy of the whole earth. So he says, they said rather, is elevated, is not here. It's not on earth. It's a holy mountain. It's an invisible city that they that do the high praises of God, those that worship God in spirit, and worship God in truth. They are lifted up. Their eyes are open to see things that man desire to see but cannot see. Continue. Is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king? Now they say something that we in our generation have no clue of. You had to be back in those days when they penned this to understand exactly what they're saying. This, this is a terminology used and, and is used mainly by the heathen than more than the saints. Because saints that do not get in high worship can't believe what they just said. They said, it's elevated high. And it's the joy of the whole earth. Is Mount Zion, and then they use a clue word, in the far north. A word that's used by heathens that we read in mythology. It's the Olympus. Olympias. It's, it's the Zyphon. In other words, other nations, they had one too. But God made sure that men could no longer look at it. So when we study mythology and we study the history of the gods, it seems that they would be discussing something that we would say the heathen is discussing. Is there a Mount Olympus? 
Well, the sons of Korah says, yes, there is. And they said, how did they say it? Far north, Zaphon, Mount Zaphon, Baal Zaphon, we read in our Bibles, or all of these various mountains. Why did God place so much emphasis on mountains in the Bible? Because God resides on them. And even though the Bible tells you that, maybe your pastor said the Bible was wrong. Let's continue to read. God is in her palaces. God is in her satellites. God is there. God is in each one of the gods that's there. See, when I share the verses from the New Covenant that I'm going to share with you today, you're going to say, oh, my God. It was always there. What was always there? Mythology. A myth that's a truth. That is hidden even from the bride of Christ, even hidden from the church. God is in her palaces. God is in God is in each one of the gods. Each palace has a God in it, and each God in the palace has God in them. God in us, the hope of glory. God is in her palaces. He has, he made himself known inside each one is their stronghold. God likes to reveal himself in gods in a particular way. So there's a God of mercy. There's a God of joy. There's a God of hope. So God decides to take his Godhead and place into someone else one attribute of just one part of his Godhead, and that is the God of hope. God puts something in this vessel and then gives it its palace. God is known in each one of the palaces as their stronghold. Hence, hope has a foundation that cannot be moved. Why? God is in her. And so God wanted to be in us to be our stronghold. So David penned it. He's my strong. The Lord said to Abraham, Go before me. Why? I will become your stronghold. I will give you a name that will last throughout generations, that to this day, the name of Abraham is a stronghold. And so God is in her. Verse 4. For behold, the kings assembled. The kings come to see the gods. The kings come to see the gods. God is in each one of the gods in the palace, in the city. The city is made of all of these strongholds, all of these palaces where gods reside. And the kings of the earth, because this is Mount Olympus, but it's called Mount Zion. This Mount Zion is filled with gods. God stands in the congregation among the gods, it says in the Psalms, to show himself to the kings as an individual God that each king comes to bear homage to. And so the Bible is telling you these stories in a line upon line and precept upon precept and here little and there little. And you can't see it. But you're tiny. You're real tiny. We ants. And he's not an ant. The kings assemble themselves. They pass by together. And what did they do? Go ahead. They saw it. 
And so they marveled. They were troubled. They hastened away. They was the kings that are terrified by the gods. Kings. Not, not presidents that sit in White Houses and send people to war, but like in the old days where kings led their men out to battle, that was brave, that didn't fear the arrow, didn't fear the sword or the shield. They were courageous. The kings are terrified by the gods. They're terrified by the gods. Continue. Fear took hold of them there, and pain, as of a woman in birth pangs, as when you break the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord so of So they said, the sons of Korah says, as we have heard, and as if we sing, we put it in a song. We sang out experience. We sang our testimony. We saw it, so we pinned it. We got people singing it, but they can't see what they're singing. We got people singing it, but there's no feeling. There's no intimacy in feeling the city of God. Seeing the gods. Imagine seeing the God of kindness. Imagine going in that palace and seeing the furniture. Imagine eating of the fruit of the table of kindness. And then going back to your place and manifest what you ate. Demonstrate what you saw in the palace of kindness. Imagine walking down the street and, and seeing these different palaces, and then each one possess a God of. And imagine coming back and telling people what you saw. You wouldn't have one believer. <laughs> so the sons of Korah depended for people like myself. That one day I will offer up the high praises of God and hear voices, come up here. To be able to walk down the street, to be able to walk in the palace and be welcome among the gods. Continue. In the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, God will establish it forever. Uh, God will establish her forever. In the city of God, this city known in Revelation 21. When we go there, you're going to see what I'm talking about. Yes, if you're not blind. The, it says, Salah. Don't go to the rest of this psalm yet. Why? I, I spoke too fast. Pause. Take a break. Commercial. Advertisement. Run quickly. Get something. <laughs> Why? Before we pick up the second part. Why? Because you want the second part because you can't handle the first. Yo, oh, Pastor, you said it like, like you've been there. No, it's not have I been there. It's how many times have I been there. See, the sons of Korah are not the only one that's seen the city of God. Verse 9. We have thought, O God, on your loving kindness in the midst of your temple. How kind it is for God to let us come into the temple. <laughs> not, not a temple made with hands. <laughs> see, see, listen to a prophet. See, it's the prophets to tell you the things about what I has never seen. This is what the prophet says. Will God indeed dwell in temples made with hands? See what a prophet would tell you? A prophet would tell you he ain't in your church. 
<laughs> a pastor would tell you, come to the church and even put his name on. And even the name, a pastors give the church whatever name they want. First Baptist of Glen Arden, or, 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 or second Baptist of Northeast. I mean, I mean, well, nobody wants to be second. <laughs> How many second Baptists have you been past? You know, everybody can't be the first Baptist. <laughs> and none of them are really the first. John was the first Baptist. <laughs> If anybody could have named that church First Baptist, would it be John? <laughs> oh my God! And they, but he had no name. He really says they say, "Are you him?" He says, "What?" He says, "I'm just the voice crying in the wilderness. You better get ready. Why? The city is coming. How do we know it? His foundation is in the holy mountain." It's not on the mountain down here. The foundation is in the holy mountain. No mountain of dirt can ever be holy. <laughs> it's made of dirt. <laughs> oh, boy. Back to my message. <laughs> According to your name, O oh God. According to your name. According to your name. How many names does God have? Then you know, Revelation told you he had on his head many names. <laughs> wow. Wow. That means in different cultures, in different times, in different points of history, God had a name for that group. And you didn't know they were talking to the, your God because they were talking to a God. And you didn't know that a God. Is God, every, everyone that has a different name, because each one has their own palace. This is what we call a deep message. God has many names. He has many crowns. And you can read the verse. But what happens if you was to see the name on, his, on one of his crowns, or on one of his heads? You say, wait a minute, that's blaspheming. Not on his head. Only in your understanding. Because you limit God to you, your race, or your people. As if God didn't make the others. I will say that again. Don't you know he's the God of all flesh? Do you know he's the God of all spirits that's in the flesh? Do you know he's a God of gods? Do you know he's the most high God because he has under God, un gods under him, which makes him most high? And how do you get to worship the most high God? You can't. He's limited that only to the gods. See, you can't worship the Most High God. You must worship one of the gods under him that he placed over you. And when you don't honor the God that he sent to be over you, you can't honor him who sent him. See, so the Most High God has reserved worship only by gods who can see him. That's why man always made gods they could see. And so did God. <laughs> God made gods that he could see. And he says, hey, who made you? And they said, you. And he said, what's your name? And they said, God. And he said, what's my name? They said, most high God. See, there's no little G gods. There's little men. <laughs> There's little people, but they ain't never been a little God. <laughs> See, you can't have title God and be little. <laughs> and so people say, well, that's a little G. Watch out, he's going to smack you. <laughs> little G can really take the t smack the taste buds out your mouth. And then you can say, when somebody asks you who smacked you, you can say, little G. <laughs> So I have to constantly tell pastors, 
There's no lower and uppercase in the original writing of scriptures. Translators said, I'm not going to respect this God. I'm going to call him little G. But the gods in heavens are laughing because in heaven they know there's no little G's. They know that they are all God and there's only one that's most high. And they worship him. Satan is a god. Guess who he worships? You're not going to believe this. <laughs> There's a day when the gods present themselves before the, the Most High, and Satan is among them to do what? Hallelujah. Because God made him to be the God of evil. Do you know he don't ever want to be good because he's never been made by God to be good? He's a liar because God made him a liar. Why? Because God is the God of liars. Hmm. See, how do I know God is the God of Latin? Because I made Satan. I made him to be who he is. He's never going to be like my other God, Jesus. I made, he can't be Satan, and Satan can't be him. I made them both. Why? For my pleasure. They are and were created. I made this one good. I made this one evil. Why? Because I'm good and evil. I made the light and I made the darkness. I called one day and I named the other one night and I said, it is good <laughs> to have light and darkness in the world. It is good to have a tree of good and evil. I made it. I made it. It didn't just pop up. I made it. So, God, watch this. Keep reading. According to your name, O God, so According is your praise. According to your name, Most High God. Go ahead. So is your praise to the ends of the earth. And we can't get to him because we have to praise one of the other ones. You say, where do you get that? And God so loved the world. He gave us his only begotten son that whoever worshiped him and praised him, God said, okay, you got to pray to him. See, see, you have to pray to him. My father is greater than I. You have to pray to the son who's God. You have to pray to him. Hold your hand here. Hebrews chapter 1. See, 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 you're having a problem with God, with God. That's because you don't read your Bible. Well, you, I know you people out here saying, I read my Bible all the time. <laughs> now, I know you read your Bible. So when I said you don't read your Bible, it didn't mean you don't read your Bible. But let me show you you don't. <laughs> Chapter 1. Verse 8 and verse 9. But to the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is so forever. So he called the Son God. So he said, but to, of the Son, he says, of the Son, he says, your throne, your throne, O God, because the Son has a palace or throne he sits on. Are y'all with me? Oh, no, y'all not. Oh, God, and what kind of throne and God he has? Is forever and ever. Is he's an everlasting God that sits on an everlasting throne. Why? Continue. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. But so he has a scepter in his hand. Okay, 
He he's like Nephilim, ne ne Neptune with his scepter. He's like Zeus with his scepter. In other words, he's one of the gods. Is Mount Zion, is the Olympus in the sides of the north. It, Mount Zion exists. Olympus exists. And there's gods with scepters sitting on thrones. And one of them is God. Our God. And, and what power is in his scepter? So if he touch you, you can't help but get right. <laughs> he has the power to zap sinners. Ask me how I know. Ask me how I know he's God. He zapped me. And it's been 40 some years since the zap. And I'm still zapped. Continue. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Now watch the two gods. I told you you didn't read your Bible. Watch this. Therefore, God, your God, oh, has anointed you. So I want you to hear me real softly. God has a God. So don't ask that dumb question anymore. Who made God? He answered, God. God made God. And then God said, you better worship him. Don't worry about me. Why? Because you can't worship what you can't see. So the word became flesh <laughs> and dwelt among us so we could see God. We worship only what we can see. And the truth of the gods is only those that see God can worship God. That's why Jesus said, you know not what you worship. You worship only things you can see. The God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit. And you're in church, in flesh. And you keep telling people you saw God. God is laughing. He, you ain't seen nothing. <laughs> you just all talk, quoting verses, being spiritual. Or should I say religious? Therefore, God, thy God, what, what, what did God do? What did God do with God? Your God has anointed you Tell, with the oil oh, of gladness. Oh, so God got anointed. In other words, he couldn't be God without an anointing. And so how did God anoint him? He put another God on the God. It's called Holy Ghost. The word became flesh, and then God put the Holy Ghost on the flesh. So he had put God on God so that God could always be led by God. God never wanted God to lead himself. So God led God into the wilderness to be tempted by God. So the Spirit led Jesus in the wilderness to be tempted by the God in the wilderness. God had fun among the gods. Things that God likes to do, being God. <laughs> so therefore, God, thy God has anointed you with the oil of gladness. He put Holy Ghost on him, and the Holy Ghost said, I'm going to lead you in there where the other God is. You're taking me to the devil. Shut up. Close your mouth. You are sheep led to the slaughter, God. So God told God to shut up, and he did. Because only God can shut up God. But it was the oil of gladness. 
it pleased the father to bruise the God who would be son of God, who would grow up and become God, to be our God. So we worship him while he worshiped the one you can't see. <laughs> oh. And so our God is also called Lord. Next verse. And you, Lord, in the beginning. Oh, so, so, so God is not just God, he's Lord. So who is he? Well, he's Lord, he's God, he's king. He's a shepherd, he's priest. You see, when you, have, when you become God, you got a lot of names. <laughs> you like him. You, you, you don't know how many names you're going to have. You say, how do you have names? That which you begot. Hence, I got a lot of names. Erica. Aaron James. Keturah. Deborah Marie. Michael Isaiah. David Jeremiah. What did God do? I made six more gods, and I named them all. They couldn't name themselves because they didn't make themselves. <laughs> so all the gods made was made by God and named by God. He gives each god its name. Then those gods go, and they make things. And they become the sons of them. And James went and made Jaden. He named him. And he sits in his palace <laughs> with his queen. And he calls his sons and his daughter to his table to eat among the gods. And then he brings them to granddaddy's table. And they see their father become a son. But he used to be father. But in the presence of me, he's a son. Is there a God like our God? I know not a God like that. That makes God, that makes sons, that make gods, that make sons, that make gods, that make sons. So when the Bible says sons of God, which group is this talking about? John 1 verse 18. So where did God come from? From God. So if God made God, where did his God come from? No one has seen God at any time. See? No one has seen God at any time, but we saw God. Why? He became flesh and dwelt among us. But it says, no, 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 no. You ain't seen God. You saw the God that God made. You only saw the God that God made to be God. So where, did, so where did he come from? The only begotten son who was in the bosom of the father. Where did AJ he, come from? My bosom. Where did Erica come from? My bosom. Keturah, Deborah, Michael, David. Where did all my kids come from? <laughs> <laughs> When God gets excited, he makes gods. And he gives each one he makes a different name. And then he says, somebody must worship you because you're God. And because you came out of me, how does something that's seen come out of that which is invisible? I'm going to say that again. No man has seen God at any time. So in order for you to see something that's invisible, God puts something out of that which is invisible. Because, in other words, he's cloaked. Oh, y'all ain't understand. Y'all don't know what cloak means. Cloak means you took it in the, no one can see you. It's stealth. You're hidden. And so guess what Mount Zion means? It means hitting. Zaphon, all of these different high places of Olympus and all of these places, no one knows what their names really mean because they say it's hitting. You know, an angel came one time and they asked him his name. He said, <laughs> secret. 
He said, my name is hidden from you. Even if I tell you, your understanding is you human. You can't understand an angel, and you're going to understand the God over the gods? Continue. He has declared him. Now, this is the testimony. Oh, he's declared the invisible God. Why? Because he's a God that we have to see because God gave us eyes. <laughs> Why did God give you eyes? So you couldn't see God. Did you know your eyes are made so you can't see God? Your eyes are specially made to see a God, but not see the God. Why would he do that? Because God said, if you want to see me, close your eyes. <laughs> so the blind man that Jesus came to in the Gospel of John chapter 9, he said to the people that was over the, that was worshiping God and saw God, he said, he, God opened my eyes. They said, no, a sinner opened your eyes. He said, what you doing in the priesthood? Have you ever heard since mankind been on the earth that a man has been able to open someone's eyes born blind from birth? He said, they say, you a sinner like him? He said, I may be a sinner, but I ain't blind no more. <laughs> <laughs> and they say, you are all together born in sin. He said, I'm leaving this church. Why? Because the blind leaves the blind. And as soon as he walked out of the church, guess who he saw? Jesus. He said, who are you? He said, I'm the one who opened your eyes. He said, then you're God. Then you're God. I worship the one to open my eyes. And so you must become blind to see. Because without what you call God, you calling God, it ain't God. It's your God. So, back to Psalms 40. 48. <laughs> Verse 10. According to your name, O God, so is your praise to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of righteousness. So depending on the name of the palace of the God that you do, that's how you worship. Whatever God brings your way to reveal to you hope, mercy, kindness, grace, love, joy, peace, that's the one you worship because that's the one that touched you. See, your God is not my God. We get touched by different gods because we are different. Therefore, our emotion is designed to respond to the God of that emotion. <sighs> That's over your head. So let's continue. I don't want you to get lost. I can feel when you got lost. Lost. <laughs> Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let Mount Zion, what? Rejoice. Let what? Let the daughters of Judah be glad. The daughters of Judah. Let the cities of Zion. Here the daughters of Judah is speaking of the cities of God. The cities. They, in other words, Aaron James is a city. Eric is a city. They are, they, they are walking out and they have life in them. They're their own new generation of people. They leave me. My daughters leave me. My sons leave me only to produce other sons and daughters and become a city. So these daughters and these sons are the cities that will surround their father. They, 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 they are the cities that becomes a nation. Continue. Because of your judgments. Walk about Zion and go all around her. Count her towers. Count, count each god, each stronghold, each tower. How, how high and how tall are they standing? Look at hope. Look at his legs. Look at his chest. See if anybody can move the hope that God gives. See if somebody can take joy out of his place. Walk around and, and look, at the, look at the towers and the palaces of God. Look at them standing in their glory. 
Continue. Mark well her bulwarks. Consider her palaces. Count every towel. How many gods are there up here? How many, how many gods are there? Consider her ramparts and go through her palaces. Why? That you may tell it to the generation following. Because you need to tell people what you saw. But you can't say anything because you ain't seen nothing. It requires high praise. Verse 14. For this is God. For that is God. God is the whole city. He's in every palace. Know you not that you're the temple, you're the palace of God. If any man defile their palace, God will destroy that palace. He's not welcome in it. So God won't take that palace and add it to the city. No, you're not. If you're a temple, God wants to add you to the city. He wants to put you in your, 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 your quarter, your, your place, northeast, southeast, northwest. Southwest, where does God want to put you? North, but where north? East or north, or west or north? Or he wants you in the south, to the east or the west of south. Why do you think you have four gospels? One is north, one is south, the other one is east. The other one is west. Why do you think this city is four square? Where are you going to live in Revelation 21? Shall we turn there? Okay. <laughs> I mean, it is the city, right? Revelation 21. Let's start with verse, verse 2. How much time? Oh. Not much time. Then I, John, saw the holy city. So John was in doing the high praises. He was on the island of Patmos. He was praying and he, he, he was doing the high praises. And somebody said, "Come up here, so you can show people, tell people what you saw. What, what, tell them what you saw." He said, "I saw what? The holy city, I New saw Jerusalem. The, holy city, the New Jerusalem doing what? Coming down out of heaven from oh, God. Oh, I told you that made with hands." See, Abraham looked for a city which had foundations whose builder and maker was God. He looked for a heavenly country, it says. And people said, well, didn't God promise you some land down here? And he said, yeah, God promised me land in two places. Down here, because I got people that need to live down here. And then people who want to live up there. So I got land, I got investment in heaven. And investment in earth. You know, when, when I first got saved, the Lord wanted me to see my, my house for the new earth. Had a pool table, had a big organ, different levels. The pool table took up a whole room the size of a high school. And, and so the church I was a part of, they told me, before the Lord took me to heaven to show me all of that, they told me get rid of the pool table because it was worldly and carnal, and I got rid of my pool table and everything. I got rid of everything the church told me to get away. I got when I got to heaven, the Lord showed me everything that they. <laughs> so I got back and and I went back and I bought everything back. And the, and the pastor in the church said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I said I, I, I'm 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 correcting your lie." <laughs> they said, "Who told you that?" I said, "He that took me to heaven. He didn't just tell me. He showed me I got a pool table there." And guess who played pool with me? You ain't going to believe that. <laughs> the, the Lord. They told me I couldn't dance. The Lord took me dancing on his special floor. It's called the Crystal Sea of Glass. That is, it's been waxed. That's why I look like it's crystal clear. It's wax. It's the dance floor. And if you're a real good dancer, he put you in the one with the fire on it. <laughs> That's when you really move, boy. <laughs> you know, like David danced with all his might. Yes. He was on fire. <laughs> That's why when he comes back, he's the prince of the earth. Ooh, don't touch that. Let's continue to read. So, so it's this new Jerusalem that comes down. 
It's, it's special. Why? Keep reading. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. The, so God is a temple. No, you not. You are a temple. God is a palace. He makes some of us a palace. In other words, in this city, this Olympus, this mythology is God. And so, verse. And he will dwell with them. He will dwell with them. Remember people. now, he's in every one of us. He's in every one of the gods. Go ahead. And they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And so you got somebody sitting on the throne. Then you got God sitting on the throne. So you got two gods sitting on thrones. Then you see there's other gods sitting on thrones. How many gods can there be? Well, the Bible says you can't count them. So watch this. And he said to me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. He said, don't listen to your pastor when he tell you that, that what I just said ain't in our Bible. And so I'm going I'm to skip over to some uh, verse 11. Having the glory. Uh, no, no, verse 10. Start with verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit. Tell somebody, I told you, you can't see what I'm talking about unless I carry you away in the spirit. So a lot of people will hear this message today and not see a thing. He carried me away in the spirit, and what happened? To a great and high mountain. There's that mountain, that holy one, the one in the air. Go ahead. And showed me the great city. Show me Mount Olympus. And what did Mount Olympus look like? The holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Oh, a city that can float? It can elevate? It can go from one level to the next level? A city that can do such a thing? It moves? A moving city? What is it made of? Plasma? Energy? That it floats? Is it a gas? It sure can't be a solid. It'll fall, right? Oh, so the city must be a spirit city. Made for spirits. Wow. Continue. Having the glory of God. Oh, my God. It's got God's glory. It came out of heaven. Out of God. And inside the city is heaven and God. Wait a minute. It comes out of heaven, out of God. And in the city is heaven and God. So God is in heaven, and heaven is in God, and God is in heaven, and heaven is in God. So what heaven is heaven, and which God is God? Because Paul said in Thessalonians that when Jesus come back, heaven is in him. And so he would take everybody to heaven. Not to heaven he comes out, but to heaven in him. Because he walks around the heaven that he's in. And you can't see that heaven. Why? Because you're in him. Because in him you move and live and have your being. And he came from the bosom of the Father, and in him he live and have his being. It's almost like A.J. came out of me, and then he comes back. Since I'm the one that brought him in. Maybe one day I'll be the one to call him back. That God may be all in all. Well, we shouldn't read verses like that. Let's continue to read. Her light was like a most precious stone. So she looks like a crystal city, like mythology, when they 
describe all of the cities of the gods. I don't care what mythology you are. It's all the cities, the crystal, crystal cities of the gods. Even the Jews have a crystal city for their gods. Continue. Like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Clear as crystal. Just like mythology says it looks. Continue. Also, she had great and high walls with twelve gates, and twelve angels at the gates, and names written on them, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Oh my God, each angel has a tribe. In other words, on every tribe, that angel was over one. But on the earth, there was only a prince over them. But in heaven, the prince has an angel. As it is on earth, is in heaven. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wow, a world within a world. One seen and one not seen. Continue. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. So much for one way into the city. <laughs> I just counted 12 ways to get there. <laughs> and 12 different people you have to ask, can I come in? None of them named Jesus, by the way. Go ahead. Now the wall of the city had 12 foundations. Oh, and the wall had 12 foundations. Go ahead. And on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Oh, so here come the apostles. Who are they? They're the foundations. Go ahead. And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its wall. So you got everyone there with names. The foundation is a name because it's a person. The gate is a name because it's a person. The wall is a name because it's a person. It seemed like everything there that we talk about in the natural is a person there. Wow. So let me break it all down for you. Y'all ready me to break it down? Break it down, Pastor! <laughs> Matthew chapter 19. Matthew 19. Let's see if Jesus helped us a little bit because, you know, he was talking to people that didn't, you know, they didn't have a, Bible, they didn't have a New Testament to read back then because they didn't know they were going to become it. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. That went over your head. You, you see, there was no book of Matthew because Matthew didn't know he was going to be a book. There was no book of Luke because Luke didn't know his book. And see, you don't know that your epistle seen and read by all men. Matthew 19, verse 28. So Jesus said to them. So Jesus said to them. What did he say to them? Assuredly, I say to you. He said, I wasn't dead tell y'all no lie. That in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory. He says, when I come back to do the world all over. Because, you know, I made it one time, but I ain't like it. I broke it and jacked it up. And I made it again, and I ain't like that. I jacked it up again. He said, I'm going to jack it up one more time. But when I come back, this is what I want y'all to know when I come back. What I'm going to do when I come back. You who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones. I'm putting y'all guys on. on y'all going to be in the city, in your palace, with your tower. Each one of y'all got your own place. I'm going to make each one of y'all a god. And, and, which, and what, what am I going to be the god of? I'm going to each, each one of y'all going to be a god of one of the tribes. You're going to rule it with a rod of iron. You will sit on the throne even as I overcame and sat in my father's throne. And, and, and you will break them in pieces if they rebel against you like a paddock vessel. See, there you be God, not king, but a god. In whom the word of the Lord come, have, did I not call them God? And guess who I came to? I came to you. I chose you. I chose you. I chose you. Yeah, I'm the word that came to call people gods. I'm the word, and the scripture cannot be broken. I'm the word. And whoever the word came to, I will name people who I want to be a god. Matthew, you're going to be the god of this. And boom, 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 boom. And so God named the god. He named the gods, and he said, you will be the god of thunder. So he called James and John. You know, you're the sons of thunder because you know what? You're going to be lightning, and you're going to be thunder. Y'all going to be brothers. Y'all one going to talk, and the other one going to take care of Bam! I, I, I bet you heard that, didn't you? 
And why? You, because your mother asked me one time, could they? Could you one of you sit on the right hand of God and the other one on the left hand of God? And I said, look, that's not my power to do. Why? I'm under a God, even though I am a God. And even though, and he decides who he wants on my right and on my left. What a, and so he chose the 12. He chose the 12 other gods to put with me. I'll be on my throne as a God. They will be on their throne as a God. And they will have their sector of the city, and I will be the one under all of them. I am the rock. They are the foundations. Oh, continue, please. Judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. So listen, because I, 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 they told me five minutes, so I, I, I'm going to put two more hours in, in the next two minutes. <laughs> Acts 3, verse 21. I'm going I'm I'm to go to the Acts of the Apostles because, the, you know, the, in, the, in the book of Acts, the apostles were acting up. <laughs> so it's the acts of the apostles okay that's what it is verse 21 read verse Wh 21 whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration let's of go all to 20 things. so people know who you're talking about and that he may send jesus christ who was preached to you before whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets uh, that since the world that began. That would be me, y'all. See, I'm one of the holy prophets. See, I'm the one that's trying to tell y'all something. I'm trying to tell y'all something. I'm telling y'all, get out your flesh so you can see the city. Get out of your flesh. Get out your flesh so you can see something. Stop worshiping God in religion and start worshiping him in spirit so you can see the city. That can be seen. It can be seen. So the disciple says, come look at the temple that we just, we just saw. And Jesus says, every stone on that temple is going to be destroyed, y'all. And they say, man, don't mess up our church. And this is what they said to Jesus. They got some glorious stones. You have to see the stones. And Jesus looked at him. Don't you know you the precious stone? Ain't that what, Peter, you are a stone, and upon you I'm going to build my church. What part of my message are you not getting, Peter? So when Peter get beat up and jacked up, he get the message. He said, got it all joy when you fall in trial. <laughs> no, the trying of your faith has great patience. <laughs> you know, his voice changed like Mike Tyson did. You know, Mike Tyson, when he went in jail, he had a deep voice. I know you Mike Tyson. When he got finished, he said, you better leave me alone. You better. So, so he had to fight, you know. <laughs> that's a joke. I, that's a Mike Tyson joke. Mike Tyson going to hit that and say, I'm going to beat your butt. <laughs> anyway, back to the serious part. Okay. Isaiah 65, verse 17. I got two verses and I'm going to close. I know, honey. Pray for. For behold, I create new heavens behold, and a new I earth. Behold, I create new heavens and what? And a new earth. Go ahead. And the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. See, the sky you look at will never come in mind with the new sky that's coming. The, the substance of what it's made of, the gas, the colors, the beauty, the new heaven and the new earth, has a new atmosphere, new type of gases that people will not be breathing like we breathe in there. The food that they eat will not be like the food you eat now because the Lord would tell the earth to give of his strength where he cursed it when man fell. God is going to reverse so much. Things you see, things you taste, things you feel, things that touch you, everything is different. I create a new heaven, a new earth, and a new Jerusalem, a new city of God. In other words, the other cities, God destroyed the other Olympus. What happened to Mount Olympus and the Greek gods? Remember that before the Greek gods was the Titan gods. You know that all the gods had a house with 12 foundations? 
with 12 demigods or semigods, you would call them. Do you know if you go through the history, you see all of them have their mountain, all of them have their celestial city, and all of them have their 12. You know, the 12 sons of Jacob, the 12 princes of Ishmael, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 apostles, 12, 12. 12 Greek gods, 12 Roman gods. 12 gods of Canaan, the 12 gods of the Hittites. I don't care. The 12 gods of Egypt, all of them, the main group is 12. And after the 12, there's always 70. So the Lord chose 12, then he chose the 70. He said to Moses, 12 twives, and then he said, choose 12, 70 princes. And then when Jacob and them came into Egypt, they came in in 70. Well, the 12 was divided, and then they, bam, they're 70. So what's with the 12 and the 70s among the gods? It's their favorite number. So your Bible is full of mythology. It's not a myth. It's not a dream. And so only the people in spirit can see the dream. Only the people in spirit can see the vision. So the sons of Korah, in closing, chapter 48, verse 1. A song, a psalm of the sons of Korah. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in his holy mountain. And Psalm 46, 4 and 5. There is a river. Ooh, <laughs> There's a river. There's a river. Whose streams. See, rivers, what, what do they have? They have streams. There's a river named Eden. A river came out of Eden. And then it went into four streams to go around four gardens. The Garden of the Stones the garden of the trees, the garden of the beasts. So you, and, and, and you get all of these different entities that God turns a garden, but there is a river whose streams make glad what? Go ahead. The city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. So out of your belly shall flow rivers, streams, of living water, because I'm going to bring the river from the Mount Zion. It will encompass you. Drink. Spring up, O oh well, within my soul. Spring up, O oh well, and make me whole. There's a river whose streams make glad. The city of God. Drink of your spirit so you can see your city. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling, the one that can present you faultless before the throne of grace, the only wise God our Savior, be majesty, power, and dominion both now and forever. Amen and amen.